Lots of worry in the market at the moment for SEOs where for years we've been optimizing for the Google algorithm, taking advantage of the fact that Google has got this massive market share. Something like 90, 95% of searches on the internet go through Google. And so in the past, we've not had to bother with other search engines. We just have to optimize for Google because that's where the majority of people are going for answers. Now, in just a few weeks time, I'm speaking at the affiliate gathering in York on the headline stage, and I've been challenged by the organizers to come up with basically an AI survival guide. How can SEOs and affiliates pivot their businesses to involve a safer future where we've got all these threats all around from mass commoditized AI content on one side, but then also the supply side where people might just not be using Google anymore. So that's been a big concern for a while, even before AI. There was a lot of talk in the market about how certainly younger people are switching more to TikTok, social media sites. Apparently, this isn't me, but for a lot of people, if they want to go out for brunch or coffee, they'll simply search on Instagram for the best coffee place near them. So although there are plenty of similarities, there's definitely ways of performing SEO on those sites. It goes a long way from our traditional approach of long-form blog posts and then building backlinks to them. And of course, the overriding fear in a lot of people's minds is will people simply give up on a list of search results from Google and simply take a short AI snippet from basically a tool like ChatGPT or Google's own equivalent of Bard or the Bing alternative? And then, of course, all these other competitors in the market as well, like Perplexity. Now, before we go any further, don't forget to go to seojesus.com, click on the big red button that says Ranking Revelations Newsletter and sign up to my free email mailing list. There's a load of great benefits in the welcome email including a lot of my AI proofing resources, such as my ChatGPT AI footprints document, which will flag up some of the common mistakes ChatGPT makes and how you can train your content to actually avoid those common footprints and therefore produce content that is not only more valuable now and less detectable now, but will also be valuable and undetectable longer into the future. Because let's face it, if you're not using ChatGPT now or similar tools, then you're going to be left behind. It's not worth ignoring them, but you absolutely should learn to use them effectively. So sign up for my mailing list and you'll get loads of more resources. Now, if we do go into a future of generative search, then still that generative search is going to have its own ranking system. We just have to reverse engineer that. And that's already happening to an extent. A lot of the ways that ChatGPT seems to rank answers is basically the same as how Google works anyway. And why wouldn't it be? Google's had this fantastic market dominating algorithm for the last 25 years or so, which basically comes down to relevance and then votes of confidence, recommendations from other websites. In other words, backlinks. So a lot of early evidence suggests the key to ranking on ChatGPT and generative AI is basically building a massive digital footprint, making sure you're repeating that, that phrasing. So for my instance, I probably rank for SEO Jesus is the best SEO agency. And so when someone asks an AI these questions, all that training data in my digital footprint that I built is repeating that same phrasing that Stuart Vickers is the best SEO. And that's exactly why already in my agency, we've pivoted our link building and guest posting approach to include much more brand mentions because does it, it not only looks a lot better if you have guest posts ranking in Google, linking back to your website, saying that this brand is the best X for Y, the best solution to your problem. It's much better for humans, it's much better for Google and Google search quality raters but also having your brand out there mentioned all those times, like a little citation, it works great for SEO now, but it's also going to work better for generative search in the future. So that is why we do that. We want your brand to be the number one association for the best solution in whatever your niche is. But we're being very broad here. And one thing I wanted to highlight in my talk, don't forget that if you can't make the York affiliate gathering, then afterwards the slides will be available. But I think it's quite dangerous how we're bucketing AI into one category. If we just step back a bit and in our day-to-day -day lives, we're thinking, ah, ChatGPT, generative AI, whatever, is going to change the specific thing I'm doing right now. Yes, it will on a long enough time frame. AI is going to be around for hundreds, hopefully thousands of years. So we can't simply say that when ChatGPT came out, this all changed. And then in a few years time, there's going to be this ChatGPT 6 going to shake things up even more. It's going to be a slower progression over time. So simply bucketing that AI is going to change everything isn't necessarily true. In two to three years' times, some th things will have changed when we've got GPT 5.5 or whatever. But even at that point, it'll be another few years before GPT 7 changes another whole load of other things. And this is all a sliding scale we can't even comprehend yet. It's not pre and post AI, just with ChatGPT. It's a much slower iterative process. So this idea of I shouldn't build a website because AI is going to change all that in four years' time, I don't really agree with that. 
it's certainly going to be different. But the idea that there's going to come to this point where one technology is going to completely end websites as a whole, I don't think that's going to be a single switch, a single light bulb moment. But those are the kinds of thought experiments we should be running. So in my talk, I refer to Nassim Nicholas Taleb of Black Swan, the basically talking about the effect of the unexpected. He also wrote the book Anti-Fragile about how we talk about robustness in terms of resisting change. And so your business should be robust and able to resist change. But he's basically coined this term of anti-fragile that there are certain things that get better with change, they get better with threats. So just think about bodybuilding. You have to challenge your body and break it down in order to build up stronger. Think of vaccines where you've got to, again, challenge your immune system by attacking it in order to build up stronger. So a really interesting concept. I wouldn't say you need to read the full book to actually get that simple fundamental concept, but it's a good thing to bear in mind. But his earlier book, Black Swan, he talks about how big unknown events are actually very likely. We don't know what they're going to be. And then when you look back at them, they were so obvious. So this is a really good quote. History and societies do not crawl, they make jumps. So we always think everything is a slow, iterative process, but quite often it's quite a shock change. So if you think about Google updates or when ChatGPT came out, I know I've just said that the adoption of AI is going to be a slow, iterative process, but it definitely feels like a case of steps rather than this long, gradual approach. So just how, think how much the world changed with something like 9-11. Or even in my next slide, I talk about someone I know who had a London house and a country house. And I was very jealous because they were able to take out a equity backed loan against those properties. So basically a remortgage. So we had this historic low of interest rates. So they were only paying 3% on those loans and they could then invest that liquid cash and they were making 10% returns in the stock market. So to me, it's an incredible strategy. You're doing leverage. But it's not like you're borrowing money because it's all asset backed. But of course, there's still danger there. But as long as things weren't too shaky, then you should be all right. That was in 2018. So who'd have thought over the next couple of years, we would witness a global pandemic, war in Europe, now war in the Middle East as well. So understandably, a high risk strategy, had he done it five, 10 years earlier, would probably have been okay. That kind of gets into timing the market around 2008, but you get the idea. But it was a gamble. And big unexpected events got in the way. And now the country house has got to be sold in order to cover the now big increase in interest rates. But anyway, I'm rambling. Come to York and see my talk or get your hands on the slides afterwards. The point is, what about this idea that Gentry Search is going to take over everything we already knew about Google and SEO? I probably listed this video with some sort of clickbait title around the end of ChatGPT. ChatGPT is dead. And that's because of why I'm about to show you. As usual, it's nuanced. Don't believe everything you see in a YouTube headline, but fascinating research from Datos who have said the predicted 25% drop in search volume remains unclear. So they're far more nuanced than my rather more aggressive title. But if we come down here, there's some really interesting graphs where basically, to summarize, the big drop off where everyone switches from Google to ChatGPT and generative search is just not happening. Now, this is something I've suspected for a while because although hanging around with technology people, entrepreneurs, people were playing around with ChatGPT all the time. There was definitely a lot of talk early on where people were saying, ChatGPT is replacing a lot of my Google searches now. But steadily over time, the impact really hasn't been that great. I certainly found that you go hard thinking this is going to change everything. And then you just find yourself slicking back into your comfort zone and going back into old habits. I don't think that's a bad thing. There's plenty of reasons why ChatGPT currently is not a good replacement for Google search. The data is quite old. It can be unreliable and hallucinates. And let's not forget, most of us as humans, we're so used to 20 years of Google where we've got a list of results and we can basically make our own judgment based on clicking three to four results. Suddenly to have one simple answer presented to us in just a couple of lines of text, that's uncomfortable. We want more reassurance than that. So what Datos does, it's a fascinating tool, by the way, they seem to have access to a huge amount of basically anonymized clickstream data. So basically what websites people are visiting. So from that, they come out with all this really interesting research. So if you're into digital PR and doing those data back campaigns, I think this could be a great source of data for that, especially if you're in the marketing or technology niche. Now, in terms of search volumes, we're looking at the year 2023 from January to December. So Google starts with 91.5% of total traffic and then ends the year down to 90.7%. So that's not at all statistically significant. OpenAI had good bump in its traffic around February to April, 
rose as high as 3.1% and then settled back into a consistent 1.1 to 1.4% of total volume. So basically, Google's not massively declining and OpenAI is not massively increasing. It had a jump and it came back down again. Of course, in that data, we have the rise of Bing that was much more active in its AI adoption. So that had a 6% lift to 15.1% of the search audience. But as the article here concludes, we find almost no indication that traditional search is on a path to a 25% decline. This is what loads of commentators were worried about. I'm subscribed to lots of stock reports about Google. And so you've got all these stock market analysts coming out saying, here's a major problem for Google, where the whole business model, the search market is dying and it's going to be replaced by chatbots. So there's this 25% decline predicted and it's just not happening so far. Of course, ChatGPT and all these tools are going to get better. So they're probably going to keep chipping away. I wouldn't be at all surprised. But the idea that two years to a 25% decline just doesn't add up. And the reasons for that we'll come on to in a minute. And it's pretty much as I expected that when I'm in these entrepreneurs circles talking to people, we find we get really excited about the tool. We try it for all these different things. But then, like I say, we go back into our old comfort zone. And that is exactly what's reflected in the data. It says here, while all of the traditional search engines had repeated searches from each user over the course of a month, the AI chatbots all displayed initial enthusiasm, followed by a steep decline in usage. So Google.com average user keep searching repeatedly over 120 day period. So you see the graph there. Now what we come down here to is the average visitor to openai.com. Now my first panic was that's openai, that's not ChatGPT. Now ChatGPT is hosted on openai.com, chatopenai.com. And just look at this graph. So the typical user will investigate a tool, try it a few times, and then seemingly loses interest as the volume drops off a cliff. So really stark difference there. Now we are creatures of habits. I keep saying to people that my parents have never even used ChatGPT. So huge number of businesses are all serving that boomer market. So that's where the money is. And they're not going to be picking up AI chatbots anytime soon. Partly just through habit. It's that classic stereotype of this modern rubbish will never catch on. So that explains one demographic. But even outside of that, this clickstream data is across all users. So I'm pretty sure that accounts for plenty of under 60s, not just the over 60s. And they too are tinkering around with ChatGPT and then going back to Google search. So there's the conclusion. It might be indicating technology would need significant improvement before it could seriously challenge Google's dominance. And 2026 is not nearly enough time to achieve that. So I'm not going to read the whole document. I'll leave a link below so you can go and have a look for yourself. But this is pretty much what I expected, that ChatGPT is a fantastic shiny object and people, especially journalists, financial commentators, are very quick to jump on. Like my own horribly clickbait title I probably used for this video to say, this is going to change everything, or this is the end of X, this is the end of Y. Our lives are going to be completely changed forever. But then the weeks go on, the dust settles a bit, the hype comes down, and we stick with the fundamentals. This is what I'm always saying on my channel. Content and backlinks works. Those are fundamentals that have worked for a long time. And it seems that the fundamentals of a search engine, which is use that algorithm to give me a list of results, and I will then choose which of those results I prefer or believe. And you can take that data and continually optimize those rankings based on that user feedback, well, that's going to be really tough to beat. And an easy chatbot that just presents you with an answer or set of answers that we don't quite believe, it seems like it's going to be a long time before that's a serious threat. So this is ChatGPT. My next question was, what about Bard? Well, I think this is a really, given the contrast we're seeing here, I wouldn't be surprised if this would really factor into Google's business choices, that this clearly says we don't want AI chatbots, or at least we're not impressed by the current AI chatbots. So this data is saying, please just give us our top 10 results as normal. So I don't really think we need to be fearful. My key, key takeaway of this talk is basically just keep doing what you're already doing because that's always the easiest path to success. It's far easier to compound your existing wins and stick with what's working rather than go chasing off down a rabbit hole, chasing the next wild goose. So take action now on the fundamentals and act while others are fearful and stuck on the fence. But do you manage the upside, manage the downside, because some sort of major disruptive event is inevitable in the next five years, whether it's wars, Google updates, AIs, it could all happen. So we do need to be prepared. Look at how many people are still nursing their wounds after the Google helpful content update. But I keep finding myself going back to this chart I stole from Alex Hormozzi, which is we get this new idea, whether it's a new business, new channel, and we start with uninformed optimism. This is the solution. This will make it easier. Then we see the, the, see the problems, the kinks, and we go into this pit of informed pessimism down to the crisis and the crash of burn, the pit of despair. Whereas the key thing, and this goes through every marketing channel, every business idea, you're always going to end up here. But to get through to achievement, you just have to power through it, get through into informed optimism 
and keep going and refine and optimize your way through to achievement. So everyone who's panicking about the end of SEO and the end of Google, ChatGPT is going to take over everything. They're kind of stuck in this phase at the moment where they found this great channel they really like, but it's under threat. But the fact is, whatever business, whatever channel you move into, whether it's ads, TikToks, another business model, you're still going to have to go through this process. So in my case, yep, yeah, SEO is not an easy path, but I'm far happier sticking with what I know, having already gone through this and continuing on this improving and optimizing streak, compounding my existing wins rather than going chasing down a rabbit hole, thinking this doesn't work, we'll crash and burn, forget that one, move on to the next one and have to repeat the whole process over it again. So I'm really happy with this. This is great reassurance that sticking with SEO is the answer. It's not perfect and the future inevitably will see a reduction in Google's market share and there definitely will be a presence of AI chatbots and generative search results at the top of search engines. But overall, the model that has worked for so long does not seem to be disappearing overnight.